hello guys welcome back to another video and guys in this video we are gonna see how we can change our loss function from msc to gross entropy and the reason that we are doing uh, or we are changing our loss from a mean squared error, error loss to gross entropy i have already explained when i exp uh, i have already explained that in my logistic regression series in which i have used binary gross entropy but let me give you an overview Basically, when we use MSE, that is mean squared error, uh, it does not give us a global minima. And uh, why does it not give us the global minima? Because it is a non-convex function. But when we talk about cross entropy, then it is a convex function. And that gives uh, us a global minima. So uh, I hope that you have watched my linear regression series in which I have explained everything in very detail, like how loss is directly associated with the uh, global minima that we are going to achieve or how gradient affect loss and how we can attain the minimum loss basically so gradient descent is another name for uh, back propagation and back propagation is basically we used in machine uh, in neural networks and gradient descent we use in normal machine learning algorithms like uh, linear regression so i have explained everything in detail in those videos like how or how things works like that but in this video, I'm going to explain you how, uh, what will be the new uh, gradient for our algorithm if we change our loss function to mean squared error. Uh, sorry, if we ch uh, change our loss function uh, from mean squared error to uh, cross entropy. So let's see first what we have uh, derived until uh, the last video. So we derived uh, four things. So let's let me just write them down uh, write them down and first of all and the loss uh, was based on the weights and it is it was for the last layer okay the second part that we derived was the bias uh, derivative again for the last layer uh, so capital l here uh, represents the last layer okay now we also uh, drive the derivative of the uh, for the loss with the res with respect to uh, yeah sorry so we also drive the uh, loss uh, with respect to the weights in the hidden layer so those weights were like d i j and here is small l represent the hidden layers okay then we find the derivative for the loss with respect to the bias for the hidden layers so let me just write them down and then i will explain you so as let's first see that uh, basically this was the uh, gradient for the weight parameter and this is for the hidden layers as we can see here we have a small l so these were the parameters like and the loss was affected by the z value of the next layer uh, and then this z value was affected by the j uh, the activation value of the uh, jth layer then this uh, activation value of jth layer was uh, uh, dependent on the activation value of uh, not the activation but the z value of the jth layer and then this z is dependent upon the uh, weight matrix of the previous layer okay so this is what we have done uh, we did in the last video like uh, these were the values that we found and this value is uh, this value is delta of j of small l and this is then multiplied with this okay so this is the uh, loss with respect to the this is the derivative of the loss with respect to the weights of the hidden layers and for uh, delta of l d p j of small l it is just going to be nothing but d j l so i have explained everything in my previous video so you can go and check that out we do not have to make any changes to this part okay this part is good uh, we do not have to make any changes to this part now let me stop this okay 
so now let's take a look at this part so uh, in the last video we talked about that okay the loss uh, is affected by the uh, activation uh, value or the basically the loss uh, let me just show you so let's suppose this is the last layer this is the z value this is the a value then this a value is nothing but y hat this a value is nothing but y hat okay and uh, how, uh, the loss what is the loss the loss was y hat minus y this is the loss so basically this loss is affected by this value whatever our a is uh, going to be uh, that is going to depend our loss okay so that's why we have said that uh, l is dependent upon the activation value then this activation value is depend up, dependent upon this z value okay and then this z value was dependent upon the weight values w i j okay so i i hope that it is clear but i have explained everything in my previous videos so you can go and check that out i'm not going to de uh, get into detail uh, so let's move on so the loss and the activation function is here this this was uh, derived from the MSE mean squared error. So this is the loss that we have used and this is the activation function. So the activation function that we are using here is sigmoid and then this is a normal thing. Okay, uh, not normal thing, but this is the derivative for this. So you can just ignore this part. We do not have to worry about it. it. Okay. So let's see how uh, we are going to uh, change our msc loss to uh, categorical uh, cross entropy so let me just try uh, things now d of l divided by d of a j and d of a j is affected by d of z j Okay, so uh, now what we have to do is we have to take a look at the uh, loss function that we are going to use. So let me just write it down. So the loss function, uh, the binary loss function that we saw in our logistic regression, it was something like this. So sigma and uh, let's suppose, uh, yeah, sigma y i log log predicted value of the same values so this was this plus 1 minus y i and log 1 minus predicted value of i so this was the function that we saw in logistic regression and this is nothing but this is called as binary cross entropy okay and uh, we can use this function it is not a big deal what we are saying here is that uh, uh, it is called as binary because as you can see here let's suppose and um, this is y so this is going to be let's suppose this is zero Okay, so the next other value can only be 1 minus 0. So other value can only be 1. Okay. And let's suppose this is 1. So other value, uh, this is going to be 1 minus 1. And other value can only be 0. So it can only produce uh, 1 and 0. That's why it is called as uh, binary cross entropy. But you can also expand it and uh, like we have a term that is called as categorical categorical uh, cross entropy so this is a special uh, bc binary cross entropy is a specific uh, case or a specialized case for uh, of a categorical cross entropy okay now let's put all of this aside and what we are going to do here is I'm going to uh, just expand this equation so that we can have our output. Okay, so 
let's do that first so the if we are going to find the derivative of this then it is going to be nothing but y i divided by y hat i and also yeah uh, this is going to be nothing but uh, this is going to be like this yeah so y hat uh, y i uh, and divide by predicted value of that i okay and then we will have plus uh, uh, 1 minus y i uh, y i divided by 1 minus predicted value so if you will uh, see like what i am doing here i am doing nothing but i am taking the derivative of this part uh, which is going to be this and uh, the derivative of this is going to be negative so this is going to be negative and we also have a negative outside okay so th and this negative is this negative and um, if we will open this then what it will be it will be minus y i divided by predicted value uh, plus 1 minus y i divided by 1 minus predicted value okay so this is what we have got so far now let's move ahead okay so now what we need to do is uh, we just need to take the lcm here and what we can do um, so let's predicted value by i is 1 minus y i okay and then it is going to be minus y i plus y y hat i uh, plus y hat i and minus y hat y i so this is what we get and we can cancel them out okay so now the final output that we are going to get is minus y i plus predicted value y i okay and divide by y hat i uh, and 1 minus y hat i so this is what we uh, got from this part okay what is this this is the activation value so the uh, so basically what i am doing here is i am taking the sigmoid function and the derivative of sigmoid function uh, so the derivative of sigmoid function uh, let it, uh, let's say this is the sigmoid function and the derivative of this is going to be nothing but z 1 minus minus z okay and if you uh, like i said that uh, we have z we have a then our loss is nothing but y hat minus y is our loss and y hat is nothing but a okay so this is the sigmoid um, basically this is the activation value the activation value is nothing but a and a is nothing but y hat so what we can say here is that uh, our uh, derivative of this function that is sigmoid function can be y hat i 1 minus y hat i okay so i can just cancel them out also and we will get the final value this so this is our final value and we can write, rewrite it as y hat i minus y i so now this whole value is nothing but this value okay i hope that it is clear now let me write the whole uh, formula for uh, the loss uh, the loss derivative with respect to the weights in the last layer so let me just do that okay 
okay so it is uh, what it is uh, we have dl uh, that is dl is affected by the activation value the last activation value and then that activation value is affected by the z value then that z value is affected by the weights okay so this is what we have j now this part we just found out that this part is going to be nothing but y hat minus y i okay and this part is uh, we have already uh, uh, like derived in the last video that this part is going to be nothing but a i of l minus y okay so we have found this part and this part and this is nothing but this is delta of uh, delta of uh, j of the last wave so this is what we have found here and now dl of d b j and for the last layer it is going to be nothing but delta of j and l i have already explained in my previous video why it is that and uh, why it is not present in this part basically uh, when we find the derivative so uh, i have already explained in my previous video so please go and check the those out i do not want to uh, move again uh, i do not want to explain uh, same thing again and again so this is what we are going to get and it is uh, now a little bit easy and it is now easy to understand basically uh, the function that we are going to get and um, by using the cross entropy function what uh, is going to happen that we are going to get uh, a global minima and that will be very helpful because uh, cross entropy will uh, give us a, a convex function so guys thanks for watching and in the next video i am going to show you how to convert all of this into matrix form because other if we do not use the matrix then we have to use the subscripts if you can see here and if uh, we are using the subscripts it means that we have to use the loop but i do not want to use the loop so what we are going to do is we are going to use the matrices and uh, when we use the matrices we can use the vectorization okay so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time